Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name's Mark, I'm an entrepreneur, property investor. Today we are doing my opinion on the Bank of England, inflation, all the things that are going on, potential market crashes. I mean, the FTSE is down significantly from its highs of 8,000. Bank of England raising interest rates, inflation rising, not dropping. I mean, what's going on there? I'm gonna give some opinions and I'm gonna talk a little bit of economics, talk about the cost of capital, the way that economies run, and just see if we can predict what's gonna happen in the future so that we get a good idea of where we can park our money and how we should feel about it. So guys, before we get into that, if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. We've got nine and a half thousand pounds in our subscriber dividend portfolio. I will be putting another two grand in there next month. That will grow and we will take part on a passive income journey together and I will pay all the dividends out to you guys. All you gotta do is comment on that video around about the 10th of every single month. So yesterday, today is Friday, I'm filming this for Saturday, we had the Bank of England raise interest rates by 0.25%. And that takes the base rate to 4.25%. Now over the past year, the Bank of England has risen rates incredibly quickly. And that is in response to inflation running out of control. Or maybe not out of control, but at 10%-ish. And the aim was to start to bring inflation down by controlling the amount of money that the public have to spend. So why does interest rates work like that? And how does that affect supply and demand? Let's just think about that very briefly. So interest rates, essentially when they go up, they tend to take money out of the economy because everybody who wants to borrow money has that money taken away from them. So all the people who are getting mortgages, that's a big segment of the UK, they all have their costs of borrowing on those mortgages rise. All the renters, all the people that are renting houses tend to rent from landlords who tend to have mortgages. And again, money gets taken out as the cost of that rent increases because the cost of the landlord's expenses increase, right? So ultimately they still wanna make a profit, so we end up having more money being spent on interest and less in the economy. And the aim is essentially to reduce supply and if demand stays constant, then price should fall. And that's essentially what you're saying when you raise interest rates like this. Now the reason that this is kind of new is that we're coming from a backdrop of printing loads of money, telling people to stay economically inactive, i.e. stay at home, save lives, you know, the, the rhetoric of COVID, and we will still pay you through thur furlough, we'll lend you loads of money, we'll print loads of money. So we're coming from a backdrop of that. So we've printed loads of money, of course we're gonna get inflation in that environment. Now we need to take some of that money out of the economy, and the question is how do you do that? And the answer that they come up with is interest rates. We're gonna raise interest rates. Now recently, we've been dropping inflation. Inflation's been going down, it's been having the desired effect. Unemployment started to rise, you will see all over the papers, job losses, Amazon, 27,000 people losing their job. Meta, they're sacking lots of people. Twitter, we know that they let lots of people go. All the tech giants letting people go, but the smaller businesses are doing the same as well. And that should mean more unemployment. Again, less people have less money to spend, a looser labor market so that wages don't rise too much. And again, that should bring down inflation, but it's not. Inflation's just gone up. And the question is, why has inflation gone up? And for me, this is where I think we're fighting a losing battle. And this is a bit of a controversial statement. I don't think it's gonna be possible to control inflation with interest rates against this backdrop. We printed too much, we did too much, and we asked people, we took all that labor out of the market, we asked them to do too little. So I think that ultimately, inflation's probably here to stay. You raise interest rates, inflation's gone up. Well, you've taken money out of people's pockets. There's a cost of living crisis. Pretty much most people I know are struggling more today than they were before. And that's because they have less available money. Food's increased, housing's increased, everything's increased. And why is it increased? When we've increased interest rates, because that should take away demand. But it hasn't. What's happened is that companies have had to charge more. Because a lot of these companies have had a very low cost of capital for a long, long time, which means that they can borrow and grow at a low rate. If we really simplify it down to just a landlord renting out a house, and obviously we can scale that up to a large business borrowing money to invest in technology. But let's just do a landlord borrowing for a house. Let's say there's £100,000 worth of debt, and previously he might have only had to pay 3% a year. So on 3%, he's got 3,000 pounds worth of costs to take into consideration 
on his £100,000. Well, if we're adding 4% to that, the new rate is going to be £7,000 worth of costs. So suddenly, the renter has to pay more for the landlord to make the same. Now, further exasperating that is the fact that the landlord can now put his money in the bank and get a guaranteed return absent of risk. So if you scale this up and say, I can get 10% in the bank in interest or 10% in an investment product which carries more risk, well, all day, every day, you're gonna take the bank saving. So the cost of capital has two sides to it. It's not just that my costs increase, it's that my demand for return on a risk-adjusted basis also increases. Because if I can get safety and a good return, I will choose that over risk and a good return, right? Like I will always do a risk based analysis. So this is why, and you have to scale that up throughout the economy, throughout supply chains, throughout all sorts of businesses, to really understand why I think that such a rapid rate of rate rises is only gonna affect the people at the bottom of the chain really badly, and it's not gonna do anything to this inflation number. I'm a landlord myself, my rents are going up, my interest rates are going up, my rents are going up. That is inflationary. That means that people have less money to spend on other things, Absolutely. But the, those businesses also need to make more money in order to get, generate the return that they had before on a risk adjusted basis. So housing prices have gone up, both rents and house prices. Okay, they've dropped by about 5%, but last month they went up. The month before they went up. And you know what? This month, my prediction is when I do my next update on the housing market, house prices will have gone up again and we will be getting close to back to the highs. I'm back up to 3.5 million pounds worth of property. Yes, I've got 1.4 million pounds worth of mortgages, but that was down about 120 grand three months ago. It's going back up. Prices of every good in the supermarket are pretty much going up by about 9.2%. Saving rates are going up. Again, why take the risk in an investment product when you can have security within savings? So investments have gone down. Look at the stock market, investments have gone down, right? Because you can get more safety and security. You can now get like nearly 4% in an ISA savings account, right? Why take the risk generating 4% in the FTSE? Now I understand there's capital appreciation, there's the businesses can do other things, but on a wholesale basis, the outlook's changed. Now, what do I think the overall outcome of all of this will be? Because I said this with my opinion and then my prediction, and I have to now predict. Well, my prediction is the Bank of England are gonna have to pivot. There's no other way. I think the Fed will have to do the same. I can't see that inflation's going to reduce. We printed too much money. The damage is too vast. Now, I understand that they've probably curtailed that a little bit, and kept it lower than it might have otherwise got to. But I do think that ultimately, any more raises in interest rates are just gonna lower living standards so quickly and so drastically for the people in society that already have the lowest living standards. I can't see that that's a policy that's gonna fly for too long. So I think what you'll see is maybe remits changing. Like, for example, the Bank of England's remit at the moment is inflation 2% at any cost. Well, that needs to change. Inflation at 2%, but don't destroy the economy and don't destroy people's lives and don't make all the nurses homeless, right? Because again, if nurses can't afford their mortgages and they all become homeless, well, that's not, a, that's not an outcome that society can stomach. So for me, I think there's gotta be a big pivot. I think we've been addicted to cheap credit for a long time. You can't undo that in 11 months. You can't print this amount of money, take labor away from the workforce, tell them all to stay at home, change society completely, and then not expect some inflation. It's gonna happen. I do understand that this sort of level is not desirable for a long period of time, but I think we're gonna have to inflate away some of this debt. The other thing to mention is government borrowing, right? Like you and I borrowed a lot of money through our governments. Like literally they borrowed in order to give the money to us and actually they're now paying a lot of interest on that. If that continues to raise, public services will start to suffer. And then you start thinking, Jesus, now we don't have as many schools. The NHS's budget needs to be cut. Our military budget needs to be cut right now? I mean, come on. Things have got to change. There has to be a pivot in line. The market's expecting it if you look at the yield curve. And I'll do another video on yield curves. But guys, let me know your thoughts. I don't want to go on too long. It is a Saturday. Thank you for joining me on here. Give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. 
Comment below, I have replied to every single one of my last couple of videos and I'll continue to do so. And I will see you on my next video. Cheers guys.